Hello, folks. Happy Monday to you. I hope you are doing well. I hope you're ready to play some trivia. We're going to get started in just about 90 seconds here with uh, this Monday game. June has begun. It is the first of June, but not officially summer yet. I think the first day of summer is June 20th, June 22nd, which to me didn't make sense when I was a kid going to school. The, the We were generally done at the beginning of June back in Philadelphia. Then other schools were done later in Philadelphia. That might be why summer begins then, but certainly getting warmer. The sun is out. It is not raining as much in this area. I hope the weather is also nice where you are. Uh, hello to some of you. Somebody said, uh, I think it was Patricia K said hello to Hal and Jenny. Uh, my wife, Jennifer, uh, does not go by Jenny. In fact, at our first date, I asked her if she, if anybody called her Jenny and she gave me a very serious stare. Things got very quiet and she said no. Or, and uh, never will again. Uh, Tony, your birthday is June 6th. Tanya, Tanya is short. Your birthday is June 6th. It is coming up on Saturday. Happy upcoming birthday to you. Uh, that was my mother's birthday as well. So I always remember June 6th. My best friend's birthday uh, is also sweet. Two of my best friends have their birthdays on the 2nd and 3rd. So this is a birthday alley week. So uh, congratulations to you, Gemini's. Uh, shout out to Portland, Heathy. We are about to get started here. We have almost 20,000 of you in here. So we are just about ready to play this Thursday at 8 p.m. slash 5 p.m. and then Friday at 3 p.m. slash noon. Let's get it going right now with our Monday game. It's Monday, it's June, and summer starts soon. That's my new poem. I just made it up. I hope you like it. Let's celebrate by playing some Swag Bucks Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. Me, I'm your producer, Hal, beaming from my home right to yours because the trivia train never stops running. Let's take a gander at our grand prize. Yes, there it is. That's the number you know and love. That's $1,000, and everyone who can correctly answer these 10 multiple-choice general trivia questions will split it. Even if you don't get a piece of that grand prize, after Q1, you'll get one bonus SB for any question you get right. Remember to claim those SB at the end of the game so you can add them to your account. But you know the deal. You know what I'm about to tell you. If you are a winner in today's game, you get your bonus automatically. Anything you earn during the game just gets rolled into your share of the grand prize. Our way of giving you like a little gift bag for being a winner. Folks, let's get June going as only we can. By removing the comments from sight and jumping right into the warm-up question, folks, here's question number one. Which of these games only requires a deck of cards to play? Is it Parcheesi, Gin Rummy, or Payday? All you need is a deck of cards, folks. I mean, you do need to keep score, but you don't need any gaming paraphernalia to play this card game because, well, it's a card game. Talking about Gin Rummy. Gin Rummy is the answer. Parcheesi, you need game pieces and dice. Payday as well. I think you need fake money for that. I think there are cards involved, but the only one that you just need cards to play, Gin Rummy. Love playing that game. I was taught that game by my mother. We would play it a lot. We play five, uh, five. I think Rummy Five Hundred or Five Hundred Rummy, Gin Rummy, any kind of Rummy you can imagine. We were playing it with a deck of cards. That's all you need to have a good time. Those of you who go vacationing like cabins or go camping and stuff, you know what I'm talking about. Let's move on to question number two. It's worth one bonus SP to everyone playing along. If you get it right, here is your question: A quesadilla is almost always filled with what? Rocks. Cheese or hair? What is in a quesadilla? Or as they say in Napoleon Dynamite, a quesadilla, a dang quesadilla. Now my ideal version of this Mexican dish contains some marinated chicken breast and comes with a side of salsa for dipping, but it has to, absolutely has to have that melted cheese in the middle. Cheese is the answer. Pretty much everyone knew that one. That's 99.4%. I count that as 100% in my mind and my heart and in the hearts of all of you who are playing this game. Well done. Let's just move right on into question number three. Also worth one bonus SB. Here it is. Which of these athletes is known for skateboarding? Is it Dwight Howard, Tony Hawk, or Michael Phelps? 
Who is the skateboarder? This dude will stop when he's out and about and see someone skating. Then he'll ask them to do a trick and then give them merch if they do it. That is how cool Tony Hawk is. Tony Hawk, that is the answer. 96% of you knew that one. Uh, 2% said Dwight Howard. He is a basketball player. And Michael Phelps, maybe the greatest Olympic swimmer of all time. That was another 2%, but most of you got that one right. That is what I like to see. So let's move on. To question number four, it is worth one bonus SB. Here it is. Which of these would fall into the category of seafood? Is it bacon-wrapped dates, bacon-wrapped scallops, or bacon-wrapped bacon? Which of these is a seafood dish or appetizer? It's a little appetizer, a little finger food. Now, the bacon may not be from the water, but when it's wrapped around this little mollusk, you get a world-class treat. The seafood I'm looking for is scallops, bacon-wrapped scallops. That would be the seafood dish. Oh, man, let me tell you. Let me tell you. The, first of all, about 99% of you got that one right. I, I knew you would. I'm late to the scallop game, but boy, do I love them. They are so good, so delicious. My God, I, like, I didn't know. I wasn't a seafood guy. My mother didn't eat fish, so I didn't eat fish. But I'm learning. I'm learning as I go, and I appreciate your patience with that. Let's move on to question number five. It's worth one bonus SB. If you get it right, here is your question. A series of Allstate commercials uses actor Dean Winter as the embodiment of what? Is he mayhem, joy, or hunger? I know you've seen these. These commercials have been running for years. That's an actor's dream to have commercials running for years. Now, he played Liz Lemon's ex-boyfriend on 30 Rock. He was great on that. And then he got to work with her again in one of these spots as an overeager dog in a car that she's driving. But, of course, he's always creating some mayhem because that's what he plays. Mayhem is the answer. 90% of you getting that one right. 7% saying joy. 3% saying hunger. It would be nice if he was joy, but it's an insurance. You have to be ready. You have to be prepared for mayhem at all times. And that's the whole thing is all states supposed to have you covered. But uh, Amy Poehler, who is a good friend of Tina Fey's, played Joy in Inside Out. So there's your connection in that one. We already had some people using free rejoins to get back in the game on that one. That is what I like to see. So let's move on to question number six. It's worth one bonus SB. Here is your question. According to the Gregorian calendar, when is the next time the year will read the same when rotated 180 degrees? Was it 6,009, 8,004, or 9,007? So if you turn the number around and rotate it, it'll read the same way. What year is it? It's a bummer that none of us will be around to celebrate this one. Because imagine all that clever merch that'll be available during the year 6009. 6009, you turn it around, you rotate it, it reads 6009 again. That is your answer. 64% of you getting that one wrong. But that means 36% of you, or 36% of you got it wrong. 64% of you got it right. That's good. Good for the 64%. For the 36% who got out, almost all of you have rejoined. My good, in, in my speaking incorrectly, you already did what you were supposed to do using those free rejoins to come back in the game. We have over 16,000 people still vying for a piece of a $1,000 grand prize. So let us move on to a bonus SB for you in question number seven. Here's your question. Which of these music acts has not performed a tiny desk concert for NPR? Is it Open Mike Eagle, Erica Badu, or the Spin Doctors? Has not done a Tiny Desk concert. Maybe not yet. Everyone from Wu-Tang Clan to Sesame Street have had their turn at one of these command performances. They are awesome. But they have yet to book a show for the Spin Doctors. Spin Doctors is the answer I was looking for. 56% of you getting that one right. 27% say Erica Badu. No, she had one and it was great. Uh, and my personal friend, Open Mike Eagle, also had one, uh, another great performance. And another friend of mine was playing the trumpet for him. I didn't even realize that they worked together. That is how small of a world it is out here in Los Angeles. But I'll tell you what, already about half of the people who got out on that one are using free rejoins to come back in. That's what I like to see. And the rest of you are hanging around because you know that there are bonus SP coming up. They're still on the table. You've already, probably already earned some along the way. What do you say we get you another one? Question number eight, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Which of the following is the name of a book publisher? Is it Nestle Toll House, Maxwell House, or Random House? Which of these is known for putting out books? The name for this publishing house, founded by Bennett Cerf and Donald S. Klopfer, 
was originally, it was literally a joke. They published books with no discernible pattern to them, making them a random house. Random house is the answer. 96% of you getting that one right. Well done. Yeah, at the time, there were a lot of specialty publishers. They would publish one type of book. And then these two said, well, we'll just publish anything. We're random. So random, right? All right, let's move on to question number nine. Worth one bonus SB. If you can get it right, I bet you're going to do well. Here's your question. Which of these is a sign that an audience enjoyed a show? Is it booing, throwing tomatoes, or a standing ovation? How do you let performers know that you really liked a show? When you want to let them know they did a good job, you clap for them. When you really want to applaud a performance, you get up and give them a standing ovation. That is the answer. 11,180 of you. You got that one right, and that means you've made it this far. You're ready for our final question, folks. I hope you enjoyed this little break in your day for some trivia. If you had fun, tell your friends about it. Tell your family about it. Let everybody get in on the fun of earning SB through trivia. Post to social media with the hashtag SB Live, and when you share, include that little code that you get uh, from the main menu of this app when you click Get More Rejoins, because when people sign up and use that code while signing up, you get a free rejoin. Yeah. That's right, you sure do. Now, before we get to our final question, make your life easier with easy to prepare meals from Blue Apron. I've used them, they are amazing. The boxes are delivered at your convenience and the ingredients are always fresh and perfectly portioned. When you sign up through Swagbucks today, you'll get $30 across your first three boxes plus 5,000 FB, that is $50 to make cooking easier for you and your family. You have to be a US player to take advantage of this offer. Check it out after the game. Personally, I've tried it, love it. And here's the, this is the great thing. You know how many people you're getting food for and it's exactly the right portion every time. Once you're done the meal, you will be not full, like, like you know, gorged and blah, my tummy feels bad. You'll feel perfectly satisfied with the meal you had. It's amazing. How do they do it? How do they know? I mean, I mean I'm, a, I'm a big guy, I like my food, but it's always the right portion. All right. I'm getting off track. There are 11,299 of you vying for a piece of a $1,000 grand prize. Almost 22,000 of you total are in this game. And I'll tell you what, all of you are getting a bonus SB if you can get this next one right. It is the final question in today's game. Question number 10, here it is. Which video game system is made by Sony? Is it the Xbox, the PlayStation, or the Switch? Which one is made by Sony? They were in the electronics and appliances game for a long time and then made a huge splash with their 1995 console. I had one. It's now in its fourth iteration. I have that one, too. It's a PlayStation. PlayStation is the answer. 10,799 of you knew that one. And that means you are splitting our grand prize. Well done to each of you taking home 10 SB. That's your share of the winner's purse. Plus the bonuses you earned along the way. You're getting those automatically. Beck Wascom, that's you. I'm talking to you, Bob Dane. I'm talking to, about, talking to you, Kissinger Bayer, and creating Origami 7. I love Origami. Uh, Jennifer has a great Origami short film she made recently. So today you're creating a win for yourself. You're all getting SB, including those of you with the bonuses, who I hope have already claimed them. Take those SB and redeem them for PayPal Cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, hundreds of other places. Thanks for playing, everyone. Don't forget to check out Blue Apron. We're going to do this all over again tomorrow night. Same bat time, same bat app. This has been Swagbucks Live. 